What's up nerds, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about some hot new gear that we're gonna be putting to the test this season. Uh, I'm really excited about a lot of this and some of this is gonna require a lot of work to set up wiring wise for a new kayak, which is one of the new products that we're gonna be talking about in this video actually. It's just not here yet. Well, it's right here. It's right there, but it's not here. Yeah. So we're going to be breaking down a whole bunch of new products, uh, some new to us, some actually new on the market uh, for 2024 that we want to be going through and we're excited about. So let's get right into it, shall we? Let's go to the high ticket item first. All right. Start the first the things first, we have a native Titan X right here. Uh, this is a hot new kayak that hit the market last year, dropped, uh, I think right before iCast last year. We went straight to the booth. We checked it out. We've seen the Greg Blanchard video where he's got the two screens and he's got two power poles, a new port, and a bow mount XI3. Pretty We're not going to be too far off of that. We're going to be close-ish to that. Some of the products are here, some are not, but we want to talk about them anyways. What do we like about the native Titan X? We like its customizability. It's one of the most easily customized kayaks on the market right now, and that is not something you can really argue. I love Bonafide and Native now has these plates that are drillable for wiring, so you don't have to do through-hole. You can still use like the Yak Attack through through holes, we're going to be picking up a bunch of those. You've used them. I've already them. used them. Yeah. And the through pretty... hole wiring kit from Yak Attack is a must have awesome. if you're installing something that's not a Hobie uh, that already has one built into it. It is extremely customizable, it can be used and reused, and all you have to do is buy these little rubber gaskets for, you know, if you happen to use one or need something different. So I love them, low cost. But what Jeff's talking about is there's a plate, it's about this big, and it's strategically positioned next yep. to where the where you would store the battery. It has its own battery box. There's a there's actually a bow mount battery box, mm -hmm. and then there's one under the seat. So we're also gonna be picking up another new product. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So think of this as kind of like a preview video for that. Obviously, when we get these products, we're gonna put them to the test. We'll give you our direct feedback, our honest feedback on those products once we actually get to use them. And we'll give you pros and cons and all that stuff. So hang tight on that. But yeah, the, the native Titan X, by far the most customizable. It's built for electronics, mm -hmm. and that is gonna be like sort of the new mode for any kayaks that come out on the market. You can see this with the Bonafide PWR and the new Crest that just came out. So kayaks are being built more customizable for the upgrades that people want to see. So live scope, dual screens, the works. electronics, lights, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And this is like one of the biggest ones. The other thing I think that's important for Jeff is it's a big stand up. It's a tank. Tank. Like it's, <laughs> it's longer. It's a little bit wider than some of the other ones. It's built for stability. Mm -hmm. So this is one we're super excited about. And we've got a billion comments. Like so many people were like, get yep. this kayak. So we did it. In fact, one commenter was so adamant about it that he called us idiots for buying old towns. He said the native Titan X was the only kayak that should exist on the market. So I guess I agreed with him and I bought Maybe it. Maybe he's right. We'll find out in three to six weeks. So anyways, I'm working currently with the native Bonafide team to get said kayak on a truck shipped to a dealer so I can go get it. But we are buying it. But so we are is, buying yeah, it. This is one. This one's on our dime. Uh, we wanted to get it for you, but also made sense for Jeff. So yep. it fit a lot of purposes. And honestly, most of the stuff we buy is 75% for you guys anyways. One other brand new product that we're going to be putting on a kayak. We haven't decided if it's going on Paul's Crescent Light Tackle 2 mm -hmm. or if it's going on the native Titan X. I'm pretty sure it's going on Paul's boat. Probably. But this is the brand new from Newport NK180. So they've improved its efficiency. 25% uh, longer battery life. It's got more speed. Yeah. Uh, it's smaller. It's got a better uh, throttle control. Like everything is, oh, it's a quieter. Like yeah. everything has been upgraded on this motor. Uh, so we're really excited to see the NK180. And a lot of people have asked us about the 180. Yep. Uh, but we're also going to get the, was it? 300. We are also getting the NK300, which is the bigger option. So that's most likely going to go on my tank, the barge, the new Snorlax, if you will. So I'll be having the 300. You get the brand, brand new. Mm -hmm. But the 180 seems with that like quieter, longer battery life, all but that seems like a better it's fit. It's smaller, but my kayak's going to be significantly lighter than Jeff's. So, so like it'll my, move you yeah, better. My, my, the platform yeah. for the uh, being at 80 pounds, um, you know, starting weight yep. versus, you know, considerably more, yeah. it is what it is. So there's the NK180. 
And here's the NK300, so we're gonna have both of those. In addition to that, we will also be testing out the Newport battery systems. This is a huge part, point for a lot of people. Uh, it's something that a lot of people buy them as a package deal, in which case, you're gonna wanna know how that battery mm -hmm. operates compared to some other batteries that are on the market. These ones are the Bluetooth enabled, kind of best of the best at this point, so yep. we'll have some points of comparison for you, though. And we've used Dakota Lithium, and we're gonna be using a couple new batteries, one of which is behind me, we'll get to it in a second. So those Newports, though, as we mentioned with some of this other stuff, uh, those, we are not buying those, those are getting sent to us. Now we were extremely clear, just like we are with anybody who sends us any product, whether it's a $10 item, a $1 item, or in this case, a much more expensive item, uh, it's no strings attached. So period, the end, we're gonna say what we wanna say. But if you believe in your product, you send it to us. In this case, Newport uh, truly does believe in their product and we had a very transparent conversation with them. They're gonna send us the NK, uh, the 180 and the 300 and the batteries at no charge. So just so you guys know. In addition, there, wait, there's more? There's, there's more, 58 more times. There's more motors. <laughs> <laughs> there are more motors. I think this is the last thing we'll talk about that's not currently present. Yep. So the last thing I wanna add is new to us, not new to the world. We will be getting a Motor Guide XI3 with GPS. Uh, so I have spot lock and that is going on the bow mount setup. We have the bow mount kit from Native coming. So it's a quick release kit comes with all the wiring stuff that you need, so that's pretty neat, uh, and I'm getting that from them, so we'll have the XI3 on the bow of the native Titan X. So it'll be another thing we get to test out, and it's another motor that a lot of you guys that watch the channel have asked us to pick up. As far as the XI3 goes, that is another thing that we are purchasing mm -hmm. ourselves. Hey, if you want it, sometimes you gotta go get it. Uh, we weren't gonna get a free one, and it, it just made so much sense, yeah. especially if Jeff's gonna go with one kayak for every single situation. To rule them all. To just have the one kayak that we, he really wanted wanted to get. So it was important yeah. to have the bow mount. You guys were hammering us for not getting one, so we wanted to get one for you, but it also made a lot of sense on Jeff's kayak. So he's gonna be a fully ba battery operated Titan. <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous. And so how, are we, how are we gonna power that how bad boy? How are we gonna power that bad boy? We talked about the motor. So the Newport's gonna be powered by the Newport battery. You need a 12 volt for both the electronics and for the front bow mounted XI3 trolling motor. So this battery, we were lucky enough to have sent to us from Power Queen. This is their 100 amp hour. Now it's not their mini, which I think is okay. This actually fits in the same battery box we were putting our Dakota Lithium 54 amp hour in. Mm -hmm. It is not that much bigger than our 54 amp hour and it doesn't weigh that much more. So I'm like, okay, not a big deal. But they do have a mini that I looked at their site. It was on sale. It's like less than 300 bucks. That's crazy. Which is for a hundred amp hour. And I think it's really important that we all understand that similar to like Energizer versus like Rayovac, right? They're yeah. all almost made exclusively in the same same facility. So They're a lot of batteries. times, yeah, a lot of times you end up paying for Now mm. there are some disparities and there's some, there's some things we want to test. So I want to validate mm. this, but my hunch is that yeah. some of these smaller battery operators, they may pin, you know, penny pinch in a couple areas, right? Whether it's the housing or whether it's the connector points and maybe you have to buy some connections, etc., etc. Maybe you don't get the Bluetooth option, yeah. but when it comes to like, I just need power and I, and maybe I can't charge it in four hours. Maybe it's got to go overnight or something, but I just need power that I can afford. This is when we start talking about Power Queen and some of the other, um, you know, folks who are saying, "Hey, I can make a marine battery. I make batteries for like yep. RVs and all these other places. Like, I'm an expert battery manufacturer. I can release it under my own brand and charge you a lot less than like a Dakota Lithium might charge you. So yep. we're gonna put that to the test this year. We're excited about it. Thanks to Power Queen for believing in us enough to send us a battery." beat the crap out of it, and then obviously <laughs> and believe, and believe in their brand. So kudos yep. to them. If you're trying to figure out what size battery you need, so you're gonna find out, hey, I need a 12 volt. That's the kind of voltage that I need to power whatever it is I'm trying to power. Mm. But you're like, how long will 100 amp hours last me? I will just give you a tip right now. Just Google power amp hour calculator on Google, and there's gonna be a bunch of free ones. And what you're gonna find is there's a standard draw that's listed, an amp hour draw that's listed on your device. The Garmin my uh, 10SV, um, the head unit itself pulls around three and a half. I think it was 3.4 uh, amp hours. And then the forward facing sonar unit added another half amp hour. I think that was the Humminbird actually. So okay. that was what the Humminbird was pulling and I was calculating what I wanted. I wanted eight hours. So all you're gonna do is type in amp hour of the battery, the voltage of the battery, and then the draw. And it's basically just gonna do some division for you. So the, you know, five roughly for amp hours divided by 100 would be how long 100 amp hours would last you. Same with the five you know, per hour divided by, if you had a 54, divided mm -hmm. by 54 gets you your total 
total hours of usage at that level. That was something that it was a mystery to me for a long time. It yeah. ends up being a pretty simple fix. So this will be powering the XI3 and the Garmin that I'm gonna show you right now. So it's got a job and that's why the 100 amp hour exists. Because yeah. that's a big battery. That's twice the battery that we were using in the past. So while we're with electronics and batteries and such, we did also pick up the new edition of Garmin UHD. So these are the UHD 2s. Uh, ended up downgrading screen size a little bit from the 10 to a 9. So this is the 93 SV of the UHD 2 series. Do you want to do this on camera? Do it. Don't be a coward. Oh, I did it. So that, oh God, <laughs> it's a joke. So there's <laughs> it's your- not Funny. So there's your nine inch screen. Now we have used the SV, like Jess said, we had the 10 SV. The 10 SV feels significantly bigger. I will say that right off the bat. So light. But this thing is crazy light and yep. it has all the same features. So you can do almost Nifty. all of the exact same things as the 10, uh, but with the nine, you do get the lighter package and it is uh, it is smaller, which is actually can be a benefit. It's yep. not in front of you. You're not gonna smack it with your rods and reels. It's not getting in the way of your front cockpit or your battery or emergency kit or what happens net, whatever's in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, low profile. But another really cool feature about the new UHD2 series is that they are sunlight readable. So we used to use the Burley Pro uh, sunscreen around Which our screen. Which is basically a bonnet that stuck up yep, about two inches bonnet. and ran all the way around. It's exactly what it is. It that is ran all the way around. So it was just that. a sun shade that would get yep. the sun a little bit out of your eyes. Frankly, it didn't really do that much. I do not recommend that. them. <laughs> it, it didn't work great and it was not cool And looking. it cracked. And so it's, yeah, Paul's broke. Yeah, so, obviously. Anyways, so I'm this, not using it because I don't need it. It's a it's a really nice upgrade. Mm -hmm. Another thing I'll point out is we are planning on doing a some sort of comparison. So we've been using the Garmin Live Scope for two seasons. Uh, Cause I, we're cheaters. Yeah, I'm a huge cheater, and I just and bought, I don't care. I bought my way into being a more mediocre angler. It was really totally <laughs> worth all the money. So we've been using this for a couple of years. We were like, hey, uh, should we test the Lawrence version? Should we test the Humminbird version? Active Target Mega Live. Yep. So I was like, hey, I'll try the Mega Live because mm -hmm. I have been a Humminbird user in the past, and I have loved my previous uh, the way like the way that everything worked. I really liked the, the layout, the mm -hmm. interface, and then the quality of the picture was always been really, really good on those Humminbird units. So I was like, I'll try it out. So I went and bought it, super expensive. And I was like, oh, this is gonna pick suck. Picked up a, a Solix 10 inch mm -hmm. and you picked up Mega Live, and then you posted about it on the internet. Cause I was like, this what would did be the internet fun. Say? And the internet was like, you're an idiot. It's not even <laughs> cheating because it's so bad. And I mean, <laughs> this wasn't one comment. This was dozens so and many. dozens and dozens of comments. And then people DMing me be like, sell that. And like people that I would trust, not just like Stranger Joe who just it, happens yeah. to love Garmin or Lawrence. It, it wasn't, wasn't that at bullying. all. No, it was just people being like, yeah. ah, that's a piece of garbage. And then, you know, the more research I did, the more people I talked to, they yeah. echoed the same sentiment. So look, I'm not here to bash any one brand, but I am not here to waste my money. Yeah. So I actually sent it back and I'm just going to be sticking with the Garmin this year. If you guys really want to see Lawrence, we can talk about it. You can let me know in the comments below. We, Like I said, 75% of the stuff we get is for yeah. you to do reviews for you so that we can have an informed perspective. At this point, I'm not planning on doing it because I just don't want to afford it. Yep. And the Garmin does seem like it's, if not the best, tied for the best. So we, we feel like, you know, this is what we're sticking with for now. People who catch a ton of fish and that we trust said, get rid of that thing. So we did. It wasn't a cyber bullying Paul into getting rid you of can't the Summonbird. You can't cyber bully me into, you can't bully me into anything. I'm not that guy. We've been uh, on the internet I, too long. But again, point. I'm not somebody who's like, I'm not into wasting my money. And it was pretty clear that the, the Humminbird Mega Live was inferior to Live Scope or Active Target. And here's kind of the funny thing. It's like this spring, I'm fishing no sonar. I've been out several times right now, had several very productive trips. No sonar, no forward facing, none of that. And it's been refreshing. So I think this year, for those folks who just heard us talking about live scope, going like, oh no, I hate these guys now. Hang on, pump the brake. We're gonna have mixed trips. We'll have our Crescent Sholies, which have nothing on them. We leave them just nude. They don't get extra accessories. Yep. We're gonna hit the river with those. No sonar, not even side imaging, none of it. And we just fish in the element. That's what makes the river so great. Exactly. We'll also, sometimes I'll be fishing on my old town, Big Water 132. It's not getting any electronics and it also won't have a motor after a while. I'm running a Bixby right now, but it's gonna lose that. That's going to Paul's uh, pedal 106 and I'm just gonna be paddling on that. So there will be and mixed have, stuff. Yeah, and, and then I'll you have, have a- yeah, I'll have a hook to the old yep. Lawrence units. Uh, it's just down, uh, it doesn't even have sides. So it's just yep. uh, speed, water temp, and then you know you can see cover. So that's all I really need a lot of times and that's yep. what, 
honestly, I haven't had electronics since November of last year. And really, mm -hmm. I only used it one time in November. So other than that, I have not had electronics since like late summer, so like August. So what we promise Whatever. on this channel is that you're gonna get a mixed bag. It's not gonna be forward facing. We're not gonna do like screen recordings of forward facing sonar or us staring at the screen, catching fish all the time. Will we do it sometimes? I think so, because 100%. I think it's pretty darn cool. Yeah, and, uh, and it's a learning experience. Yep. So a lot of times when we're telling you what we're seeing about lures, mm -hmm. and the I think the best example last season was all the learnings that we had with A-Rigs and the learnings that we saw yeah, with the swim baits. Yeah. I'm able to tell you so much more information about how fish are reacting to things yeah. when I can see and watch them react in real time underwater. So my ability to give you like, hey, this jerkbait's doing this thing. Oh, I can see that it's dipping down when we're going to test the credge later on. You'll see that in another video. Mm -hmm. um, that's a, a new style uh, of jerkbait. I can actually tell you what fish are reacting to when they're reacting to it and whether they're getting spooked by some things or whether they're getting drawn in or whether they're like really close but they haven't taken a bite. I can do all that stuff for it's you guys cool. underwater. I can't do that without it. So it's just a huge learning tool. So I did get Panoptic's live scope. Shocker. This is also different than Paul's live scope, so we get to test that too. So Paul has the uh, original. original live yeah. scope. The SV. This is the new edition live scope plus. Yes. So I don't know. We'll do a we'll little see comparison. If there's a difference, yeah. So on the forward facing sonar note, there is something really cool that Navar Fishing has just come up with. You guys don't know Navar, they make a lot of aftermarket. Uh, a lot of 3D printed stuff, but customizations for Old Town and Hobie. So this is a great example. This is a handle that they designed mm -hmm. that actually has an insert built into it for a ram mount. Like how yeah. freaking slick is that? And then it's an or OEM. Or any uh, gear track. Yeah, any gear track, like Yak Attack type, uh, mm -hmm. like assembly piece right here. In. So simple. And then this handle piece is the 3D printed piece. Yep. Uh, and this is OEM. So it literally just bolts right onto the Old Town like current handle. You yep. just take the old one off, screw the new one on, and now you have that as an accessory. We put two of these on his Old Town 106 pedal and they're sick. So you add a one inch ram mount arm right there. And then what you get is this carbon fiber handle from This is designed, Navarre. yeah, I was gonna say, that is designed by Navarre as well. Yep, so this is from Navarre. This is ram. This is Navarre, this is Navarre. Now this is more of an indicator. So yep. if you haven't used forward facing sonar or in this yep. case, directional sonar, uh, what it would say is like, okay, this not only helps what's you- What's forward, what's backwards? I can turn and face the transducer yep. to sh point at whatever I want. So if I cast out this mm -hmm. way and my sonar's forward, I can just go, Boop. And now it's facing the direction, so I'm seeing what I'm doing, and I'm watching the fish, and I'm learning the stuff, which is great. And then when I'm done with that, I want to look somewhere else. All I have to do is turn this handle. But the biggest thing is I can actually see which direction this is facing. That's where the handle actually is almost more valuable than turning it. I can see which way it's facing at all times. So all you do is bolt your live scope panoptics unit right there. Custom and made. Turn and there's around. custom additions for Lowrance and all the different ones that are out there too, yep. uh, which is really nice. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of different versions of this out there. They are mostly much bigger, much more expensive, and mm -hmm. they weigh, weigh so much more. This doesn't weigh, literally it doesn't weigh anything. It's crazy light and it's super simple, adaptable for any type of kayak. Um, and that's what we love about Navarre. He's making stuff that's just like extremely purposeful, but it's not gonna break the bank and it's light and efficient. So I love this. The other thing I wanna call out, with this hanging down, uh, you tend to hit stuff. You tend to hit things with the transducer yep. and you don't want this to be fixed position. If this is a really rigid base and it can't move, when you hit something, you're just ruining a very expensive transducer. Instead, it just moves. So this is mobile enough to protect it, but sturdy enough to be able to point it and use it very effectively. So kudos to Navarre. This is gonna be a banger. Going with the electronics, we're gonna be testing this out. We had Jeff Little sent us this a while back, and, and unfortunately, yeah. we haven't been able to install it yet. Boondocks slash Jeff Little. Yep, so this is from Boondocks. They call it the slotted console. Well, the reason it's called the slotted console is one, this goes in front of uh, your kayak. Um, so right in front of where the front hatch would be, it's basically sitting right in front of you like a console. And then it's called a slotted console because it has this track, track right here. And this is a gear track. Again, the same like we talked to Navarre. You can put any Yak Attack type accessories, rail blazer, whatever, you know, manufacturer, yep. ram mount, they all will fit in this track. This is the universally accepted kayak accessory track. And then you just get little risers like this. You put these on the side tracks near the bow of the boat. And then you can see these little adjustments underneath. You can adjust it to the width of the boat. Which means it can apply to almost any kayak that has mm -hmm. a place for it to, you know, it has a console area or space for this console. And it would look like this when installed. Like that is really Whoa. cool. I think what this does is this allows dual screens. This yep. gives you a place to set your rods. And that is actually a really, really big benefit that mm -hmm. not a lot of people realize. That's not always built into a kayak. 
So this yeah. gives you a nice safe place to rest stuff. So this could also be a net holder that you can mount anything you want up here. A cell yeah. phone, it could be a GoPro mount, it could be whatever you need it to be, but it's console. And the, the nice thing about the console, that middle space is perfect for electronics, mm -hmm. but there's almost no convenient way in almost any kayak to, to mount, mount something it. there or to mount multiple. So this actually solves quite a few problems for a lot of kayak anglers. Now, Navar does make one that mm -hmm. I would really like to try. Yep. Uh, so it's a lot, it's it's very, very light, and it's a little bit wider version of this because yep. it's more made of out of board, isn't plastic. It? Yeah. It's more of a board. And then so does Yak Gear. Theirs is super yep. slick, and I would love to try that one. So Yak Gear, if you're seeing this, I'm sure you're not. Um, I'm going to call you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Catch just came out with one as well, just recently. Heavy so. duty stuff. That's the other thing. This is very heavy duty, and so with the Catch one because it is going to be that aluminum. So super yep. quality. This is cool. So we're going to test this out. This will have the screen and then I'm sure a bunch of other accessories. Well, it's Jeff, so <laughs> accessories buckle up. And those are about 60 bucks. So, um, you know, if you're looking for one, that's what you're going to pay. And that's like the, all yeah. these are in the 40 to $80 range for the Navarre and the Yak Gadget as well. Last thing for electrical, not even new to us, no. but just something worth mentioning because we've loved using it in the past. Huge win. Uh, so we're going to be using the Yak Power Kit. You'll see it on the install when we get to it. So this is the Series Complete system. So most importantly, it comes with this little switch control right there, and we're able to have you know five accessories running at a time. Five channels. Five so chan the nice thing about channels is you can turn each one mm -hmm. on or off individually. They are all powered at all times, and when you're not using one, you don't have to. It's no problem. So this allows you to run all through one battery. You can have a channel for your live scope. So if you're running mm -hmm. low on battery and you don't want to have the drain, you just pop that off. Or if you're going to pull it yep. inside your boat and you don't want that transducer running, you push a button. That's cut off. The other channel channel, you can run your electronics, and another channel, you can run your lights, and another channel, you can charge your cell phone, another channel, you can run your GoPro. Like, it's a really, yeah. really convenient way to manage a lot of accessories inside of a kayak, and it's super clean. So we're going to be having, uh, in the Titan X at least, I'm going to have three things running to that in the front. It'll all be in the front. That'll be the XI3 bow mount, it's going to be the uh, Panoptics live scope, and then it's also separately going to be the actual head unit of the Garmin. So The other thing that's really cool about these is all the ports, once you actually get them in, molded inside the kayak where the, the power actually comes out of, they're actually plugs. So this isn't a permanent yep. wiring. If you have a GoPro on there, you can unplug, unplug it, it, take, take it, out. it out, do whatever you gotta do. Yep. The electronic screen, like if you wanna totally disengage your battery, mm -hmm. unplug, battery comes out. You wanna disengage uh, your live scope unit. Like there's just a, it's so easy to like engage and disengage the power coupling. It, it's really, really helpful. If you look up wiring a kayak, Yak Power comes up first. They so should. just. Look at it. Money. <laughs> so depending on which system you get, you're spending around 150 bucks on something like this, the Sirius Complete system. Mm -hmm. Because we drilled a hole in the hull of our Hobies uh, for the little switch panel there, Paul left his switch panel in his Hobie that he sold, but he took the wiring out. Uh, so we had to repurchase that for him. These are about $89.95. Because you can't get the controller unit on its own. So I, that would be- sucks. It really sucks, actually. It Come on, yeah, power. I mean, I, you know, I get it, but kind of a bummer. It. Would, like to have, would like to have just gotten that. Yeah, oh well. So there you go. This one should be pretty darn quick, but also something that I think a lot of people are just not aware of generally. And that is upgrading bearing kits. Now, one of the brands we've used in the past has been Speedspool. They do more more like generic bait casters, but they don't do like a lot of the super small, really hyper smooth type of bearing that you need for a BFS reel. The BFS stuff is a lot different than what you see from a speed spool. So what we have found that works really well for us and is really inexpensive is a brand called Roro, R-O-R-O. -R -O. I they ripped make, it. <laughs> you sure did. But they make uh, everything from bearing kits up to really, really high end, super ultra light uh, spools for these bait BFS bait casters. Now the funny thing about a lot of these bearings too is that they seem to suck at posting install videos. They're not like, good. Every bearing company needs to have more install videos like per reel. I would love somebody to just go through and install on each reel, do a video, show that. Because even with Speed Spool, I had a tough time finding some of them. But they exist. You but just figure just, it out. Yeah, it's not easy and it's difficult. Now to be fair, these are the most challenging videos I've ever made. Every time I've sat down oh, to do tough. one of these installs, these are the hardest videos to make that I've encountered yet. That being said, 
you gotta have them. So that is a drawback. So we picked this up from Bait Finesse Empire. If you guys wanna check them out, you can go do that there for 20 bucks. This is a crazy, the, the, 20 bucks. the value is insane. You can replace two bearings on a Corrado BFS. So this is our Corrado BFS, I took it apart. So on the side plate side, you can see a little bit of hint of red there. That's the new Roro bearing. That's, you your, replace main, that one. that's your main bearing uh, for pretty much every single bait caster out there. Yeah, and although there were no install videos, it turns out this is one of the easiest installs of bearings <laughs> I've ever done. It takes 10 minutes max. So basically you just have to pull that little clip. All we used was a little Roro bearing pick that to get an, that out. That was another thing. They, Roro makes these tools that makes yeah. it super easy. So and, there's And they're cheap. So there's usually two of these little pins. There's one at the bottom. There's usually one at the top. Those are so hard to get out because if you bend these, these will not work. It's so ruined. These, this little tiny cross pin right there, uh, they make a tool. So these are the two tools for Roro that I was referencing. One of these is a little tiny pick. This is yeah. like so helpful for pulling out those little uh, clips that Jeff was talking about, yep. the springs. It's also super helpful for getting the bearings out and then also making sure they're pushed back in uh, in, the, <laughs> in the exact right seating. So that's the one I would recommend everyone get if you're ever planning on doing this and they're, these are not expensive. Uh, and then there's Five this, bucks, six bucks. Yeah, this one right here. So you can see you basically put that little uh, pin in the slot you twist this down and it gets nice even pressure at just the right angle to push it out and then put it back in which is even better yep. that's one of the hardest parts so these little tools from Roro are extremely valuable and with just that pick you're able to do the two bearing replacement that I did in about five to ten minutes it's clutch super easy so there's the other bearing right there under the spool tension knob so by replacing those two for 20 bucks what you end up doing is making a major enhancement to the Corrado BFS, which in our opinion is like not our favorite BFS reel. It's because... nice. It's nice in quality. It yep. feels good. It's heavy and all that, but it it's can't. It's yeah. over braked. So yeah. this is one where I'm happy casting like a 16th ounce. But if I go below 1 16th of an ounce, all of a sudden my casting accuracy goes Swing out the in, window. It's a trash. So what happens with this, if you replace these two bearings, basically that one and that one, you end up getting the speed of the spool pickup going much faster. So on the cast with lighter lures, this spool is gonna spin up faster mm -hmm. and make it easier to cast at lower weights and get more distance in general, yep. which is really what this is all about. Easy upgrade, 20 bucks. I'm gonna test it out this year. Roro also, like we mentioned, they make those super ultralight spools. That's doing a lot of what Jeff's talking yep. about too. And they also make magnet kits. So if you've got something that's over break, uh, they do make different magnet kits for getting even lower and then again casting lower stuff more efficiently on BFS mm -hmm. setups. Their stuff's all cheap. Go check it out. B Bait Finesse Empire. Holler. Next up, we got two reels that I just picked up that we're going to be testing out. So we have the Akuma X-Series Baitcaster in a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio and we got the Shimano Nasi 2500 HG. Is it Nasi or Nasi or Nasky? I don't care, but tell Nasky. <laughs> so the Shimano Nasi Nasi Nasky is uh, right here. That's our spinning reel setup that we have just added to the TFO Taction Bass. This is my 7.6 medium light. So it's a pretty slick looking reel, nice and lightweight, feels really sturdy. Eight and a half ounces. Eight and a half ounces, dude. It's going to do work for me. And it's a very appropriate size at the 2,500 size for a 7.6 medium light. So now that combo is my go-to. So how do you get to that 8.5 ounces? And how do you get to the rigidity you need for one of these nicer spinning reels? Obviously, it's Shimano, so it's going to be smooth. That is like mm. sort of their claim to fame and what makes them so great. At 100 bucks, though, you're getting the Hagani frame. That Hagani frame is a, um, it's a composite metal. So you're getting essentially a metal frame spinning reel at 100 bucks That's this nuts. this there's only one other reel that i can think of right now uh that can compete at this size ISX. for this level of quality and that's the akuma isx i ran that all last year i mm -hmm. really really liked it again for 100 bucks it's rock solid this is going to be a great competitor and one of the only ones at 100 dollars. 100 so we're stoked to test this one out newer on the market this year it is a six two to one gear ratio mm -hmm. so it's like not your typical five four to one it's a little bit faster setup, just a wee bit faster and it's just it's shimano so we're really excited to try it out and then we we got this bad Speak boy of akuma and it shall appear oh my gosh so this is the x series reel let me get the glare off of there a little bit for you guys all right so paul's gonna list off some specs you should know about while i show you this sexy reel <laughs> so you got the combo well first of all max drag output 24 pounds this is something akuma's always stood by as having high drag i don't know that that matters so much in my personal opinion i think there's not a, ton, a huge bit. there's a ton of reels out there that don't have it that still handle fish so but you SLX. got that you got that if you want it but the slx is a great all shimano is a great example yep. of that 
Uh, it's got an aluminum frame with a carbon side plate. That gets you way down in weight to 5.6 ounces. Yep. Holy smokes. Now this is a huge upgrade. You get the hinged side plate. That means that's this is the hinge right here. So when you take the side plate off, it doesn't come all the way it's off. It's not coming off. It's not gonna, you're not gonna lose it basically, right? which is, I think is a huge, huge deal. You get the um, line size indicator on the back side, just showing it to you, hopefully I in will a be. second. You can't really see it with the rod in the way, but there's the line size indicator. This would be more so like you take it off into the season. And what did you, I have on there? You leave the line on there, you forget <laughs> yeah. what line it is, that's yep. what it's there for. And then there's also this line clip, which yeah. is something I never knew I wanted, but there's a little clip right here so when, again, you take this off into the season uh, or you want to maintenance it or something and leave the line on, you can just clip the line to that instead of like taping it or tying a knot. Or uh, looping it through the bottom mm -hmm. cleat and all that kind of yep. stuff. That is really smooth. It's a nifty little thing. Uh, and allows you to do it without taking it, storing the reel off of the yep. rod. So it's nice to be able to do that in the, in the wintertime if you experience winter. Uh, and then it's the, got the last thing I wanted to call it that I think is really nice is the 100 meter handle, so, so or 100 millimeter handle. Longer handle, I really like like the 100 size, 90's great, 100's better. So they also have the angled thumb button right there, which is really cool as well. Just more of a, a comfort fit and finish deal. And then also like just size wise, I was gonna this say, thing well, is itty bitty, 5.6 ounces. Like one, it almost feels like a BFS reel and it's super comfortable. It's smaller than a BFS reel. So here's it's the, gonna be... let's do a quick comparison. here. So here's the Corrado BFS right up next to it. These, Bruh. these are, this is smaller. Like this has a yeah. smaller profile. It's in, the thinness of the whole thing. Now, it's insane. It, it, it's it's and crazy it packs, comfortable. And with a 100 millimeter yeah. handle, it, it's a really neat package. Overall, packs a big punch too. So it punches up in weight now, for the size. It it's punches nuts. down in values. 280, so not a free reel by any means. Punching uh, down in value. But if you're into a high-end, yeah. really quality reel, one that probably, frankly, this is a problem I have with Okuma sometimes. They just, for some reason, they have a hard time marketing this as like, this is as good as we say it is. And I'm telling yeah. you, the X-Series rods yeah. are a marvel. They're, they're, they're so, so light. incredibly light. The yeah. sensitivity is there though. And this, this reel is no exception. I think for yeah. the size and profile and all the stuff you get, 280 is, I hate to say it's a bargain, but it's kind of a bargain. And it's, I'm hoping that it can compete with a lot of the high-end reels that are out there. And that's what, that's to be determined for us. I yeah. can't tell you whether it's a value or whether it's expensive or we any gotta of that. Go use it. I'm just basing this on what I see as I see it right now. We don't have an X-Series rod, but I did put it on a Psycho Stick. And if you guys know the Psycho Stick, it's a pretty Lamborghini, sick rod. Lamborghini, David. But the X-Series is basically <laughs> twice as good uh, yeah. when it comes to being light, but also powerful and sensitive as the Psycho Stick. So I, I really love to get my hands on the X-Series rods, yeah. but uh, especially after seeing the reel, just crazy nice. We got one last thing. This is actually featured this is in another so video. Bonkers. Well, we had to talk about it again. So we got this net from Bait Finesse Empire. And uh, this is called the Super Trickster Net from Jackson. It's a telescopic net that has a bunch of different accessories that you can attach to it. Essentially, it's a net transformer. <laughs> this is Bumblebee, maybe Optimus Prime. And so this net comes in three colors. You can get a gold, purple, purple, or blue. And all the accessories can be <laughs> color coded to match. And then uh, it also has three different lengths because it's telescopic, meaning it's going to extend. We have the medium. This is a nine foot, but they make a six foot. So that's the mm -hmm. smallest one. And then the longest one goes up to 12 feet, which is bonkers. We're going to show it to you right now. Ready? I'm going to, no, I'm doing it this time. Oh, no. I'm going to throw it. Throw that net so at me. Gonna You're gonna catch that. me. Hiya, fish. Look at <laughs> <laughs> and look at that. This is insane. Uh, so this is your this is your nine foot yep. extension. Uh, so what is oh, and one thing I want to call out. Let's get this back over here. You come yep. back here. So I want to show you something real quick. So here's the net collapse, but look, you get the carbon enforced handle. You yep. get this woven rubber grip. It's extremely comfortable and grippy. But check this out. So most of these extendo pieces are plastic. The last one, which is where all the the weight is, is also carbon reinforced. This mm -hmm. whole thing is made of super high quality aluminum. I'll show you. These are some of the accessories you can get with this net. So they're, those accessories range from anywhere from like 20 to $50. They have three different sizes. This is the mega. So they don't have the biggest hoop size on these. Reason being, you're gonna extend net that at least six feet. Yep. So having 
too much net makes this almost unwieldy and unmanageable. Yep. This net is designed to be, one, a little bit flexible. So obviously, when you get this collapsing, you just point this down, this thing flips over and locks, which is great. You get the clip, so if you want to clip it to a belt or a backpack or a cart, if you're you know, somebody who's pier fishing, you get that option. But this is really designed for someone fishing spillways, someone who fishes dams, someone who is a high bank fisherman or just a bank angler of any sort. Mm -hmm. You got to get past the mud flats, you got to get past you can't get in the water. You got to reach way out to grab a fish. You got to get past the trees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or someone who is a shore or pier angler. So anytime you're just going to need to get that big reach to land a fish, or if you're fishing bridges, um, this 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 could be a really nice option for you. Because obviously it works as a regular net too. Like this is going to be just fine for the angler who is yep. like ba uh, bank fishing or wade fishing. There's actually a magnet attachment so that you can just ha having it dangling like behind you from a sling pack or a vest. Then you can just clip it off and go fish it. Where is that? Show them. It looks like this. And then you just detach. And then when you want to put it back, wow. you just kind of dangle it. Get and close. Then boom, you'll hear it uh, re-engage. So really cool net, yep. um, not free. It's 150 bucks just for the net. And then the accessories you, you can get for around yep. $50, you can get, uh, again, three different sizes of hoop. And then you can get, uh, these are anywhere from this accessory, I think is like 40-ish and this is 40-ish too. So not free, but super high quality. Yep. And then just kind of opens up a new world as far as nets go. So you can go see more details on that in one of our other net videos, but Pretty frick, frickin' sweet. And when we go bank fishing, we'll, be, using we'll be fighting over this one. You can get that net at Bay Finesse Empire, and I just want to be really clear, like we have with everything else, they did send it to us for free. So there you go. We'll but we test want, it out and tell you what we think about it. Though. And it's just super important for us to showcase this, because I feel like this is something that I don't see often, and I have not seen a, a telescopic net that's of that quality. So love seeing yeah. that. Thanks. Bay Finesse Empire. Hey, remember that time that we did a gear video and then we forgot a piece of gear that was important? Yeah, it was about four seconds ago. All right, cool. So here we have the Rod Caddy. We're just adding this into this video at this point. Uh, it's a pretty cool little design for your multi-piece rods. One of the components of dual, like two-piece or three-piece rods that can make them really uh, frustrating is it's nice that they break down, but it really sucks that they break down because they're almost impossible to transport when they're broken down. So it's like, okay, cool. It broke in half. That's how it's meant to, you know, be, you know, stored and transported. That's supposed mm -hmm. to be convenient, but also like what I'm using like rubber bands or like, you know, I'm using a sleeve that's like right. not protective. And the whole thing is just getting tangled and ruined, which is so frustrating when you're trying to go on a trip and you want to bring a rod with you, or if you're trying to stash a rod in your truck and you want yep. to keep it safe and you want to keep it in one little compact area um, before you go out to fish, that can be really frustrating. This solves that problem. So for 20 bucks, what are you getting? You're getting this two piece, uh, two piece of plastic right here. It is very heavy duty. That thing is <laughs> ah, reverberating in my soul. Uh, and this fits inside of it. Uh, and then the other thing is this strap right here. So this is a very thick and heavy duty, uh, very heavy duty, way more heavy duty than it needs to be elastic piece right here. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do with this darn thing? First of all, you're going to separate your two piece rod. You're going to flip the top half down so that they're laying next to each other like so. And then you're going to reel in all of the slack. Once you've done that, you're going to take the butt section of the rod. So the bottom of the rod, you slide it right into there. And then you take all the way up to the other top section here where both of your rod tips are hanging out. You stretch this a bit right over the top and you have yourself a nice protected, super compact way to store that two piece rod. And also you can just go ahead and sling your arm through here and Shazam, you are walking down the bank, just going to your fishing spot, which I think is really, again, really, really cool. So if you're a truck stash type of guy where you like to have one rod in your truck or like under a seat, mm -hmm. if you have a two-piece rod, it's a great way to um, keep it safe and keep it close by. If you're like me, you go on a road trip, you're like, hey, maybe I'll be next to a pond and I want to fish somewhere. You can now take this with you and it's very convenient and again, safe way to store a multi-piece rod. Without buying a rod tube, these are only 20 bucks for the old Rod Caddy. I think that is pretty good. a heckin' deal. So thanks Rod Caddy for sending that over to us. We really do appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll test, the, we'll test this one out ASAP. All right, you guys, that's all we got for a bunch of new gear and some stuff that we don't even have yet. So stay tuned for kayak builds. We'll get all the wiring stuff done. We'll show you like the build when it's done, uh, all that cool stuff. And then obviously we're gonna go out on the water and do some fishing 
if this weather will stop. It's pouring being right terrible. now. Terrible. It is pouring right now. We're getting there. We're very, very close. This is actually early in the season for us. I always forget because we never fish right now. <laughs> yeah. Like right now, we have just you in a normal year. It's like just almost ice. Well, it's been ice out for maybe a week yeah. or two, and then it's still April, which means it's sleeting all yeah. of the time. Yep. Yeah. So the on the water unboxings are going to be happening soon, and the on the water reviews. usage put to the test reviews are going to be coming soon as well. So stay tuned. Smash a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys on the next video, which is hopefully fishing related. Bye. Bye. <laughs>